we have to cancel that contract that we made with ourselves that Christians are to be poor and, you know, and it's like, well, poor in what? Like what, because we now think poor, the word poor, we now correlate it to money. But someone could be poor in their health. Someone could be poor in their faith. Someone mm -hmm. could be poor in math. Someone could be poor in history. Someone could be poor in reading. So what does poor mean, right? It's, it's, it's all within proper context. Extremely the other one we'll misuse all the time too is, well, money's the root of all evil. No, scripture doesn't say that. It says the love for money, meaning if you are making it an idol, anything that we love more than we love God, that's, that's what it cautions us you know, from. And I, I think another thing that we see, especially in the leadership academy, is we start to uncover, okay, well, where are we putting our identity and our self-worth outside of Christ? Like when someone really knows who they are and whose they are, then we can realize what lies we've been believing or come into agreement with. So that wealthy businessman, I mean, it's, it's really sad going back to, you know, 2008, like the really big last crash, the real estate market and the economy, how many high net worth people, CEOs of companies like ended like the suicide rates, yeah. because when people lost everything that they had accumulated in the world, they felt like they had nothing left because their identity or their self worth as a person was wrapped up in the millions in the bank and the results that they had created. And don't hear what I'm saying. That stuff's not necessarily bad. God's given us all different assignments, but it's never our worth. Our net, our net worth is not our identity. You know, my my friend and her husband are very financially well to do, and just being in their in their ecosystem has taught me so much about my own limiting beliefs around money. You know, she's she's the one that. Um, runs Lighthouse Global Ecclesia in, in uh, the, the academy with me. Um, but her husband is, he's so neutral about money and he sees it as a tool. I've been around him on days where they generate millions of dollars in their account because of businesses, stocks. And I've also been in their presence where they've lost millions of dollars in a couple hour period, emotionally unfazed. And either way, not celebrating the win and then in sorrow with it, just, right. just neutral. Un unattached. Money. unattached like completely unattached i remember the first time it happened i was like what you're not even going to celebrate that you just made millions of dollars in the lab I'm like my entire life would be paid for for the rest of but then on the flip side i thought about how distraught i would have been at that point in my life if the millions had gone down because he had such faith number one in god that understanding well none of it's mine anyway and god will always provide so it's really challenged me too with my own i'm like where have i been you know, and, and definitely we get to be good, faithful stewards for sure, but not the identity. I, I realized times where my investments or stocks went down or maybe a business didn't go the way that I had thought it would, it would go where I got this fear and anxiety building up. And I was like, whoa, what does this really say about my faith? And so it was a way for me to increase my faith with God because I'm like, I know you say you'll always provide. You've never not taken care of me and may not look the way that I think it's going to, you know, so it's this beautiful opportunity for us to infuse our faith, our financial strategy.